Breaking news this morning. Great Big news. news. You remember we brought this to you in January. This is the Michaela School in North London. They have been found not to be discriminatory for its ban on prayer rituals by the High Court. Now, this was a Muslim Pew student challenged the ban on prayer at school. She said uh, it was discriminatory and uniquely affected her faith. But the judge in his ruling said she knew the rules when she went to the school. There is no prayer for any group in that school. That's and right. Catherine Burbel Singh has won this case. She's one of the most significant head teachers in Britain. Uh, she's amazing. She's my hero. I love the way that she teaches those students. That school is the most successful across the country in Certainly terms of is. the improvement when they arrive in year seven compared to the results they get when they leave after doing A-levels. She did speak to GB News in January when this action was first taken to court. Here's what she said then. We all need to recognise that all of us need to make sacrifices for the betterment of the whole so that we can all get on and that schools play such an important part of this. Now obviously if your school is one where the children roam the corridors and the children do whatever they like during lunch, then I suppose you might choose to have a prayer room and that's fine. You know, I'm not suggesting that all schools shouldn't have a prayer room. But I do think that if a school's ethos is such and building is such that they cannot have a prayer room, then they should be allowed to not have a prayer room. I'm having to support staff right now. They come and see me f very frightened. Um, uh, they're really scared. And gosh, last year, my goodness. I mean, that, that was the worst. Um, it was, uh, I mean, they're, they're, uh, it's not right that um, uh, a head teacher or teachers should be put under that kind of stress because they're just trying to do their jobs. And this is very really so hugely significant. The court saying the head teacher can run the school the way she wants to, really important. Because if she'd lost this case, there must be every chance she might have gone and quit. The judge has also said, by the way, uh, that the head teacher, Catherine Burbison, had been justified in suspending this student uh, based on the account of a teacher that she'd been rude and defiant. Mm -hmm over the prayer hour. Yeah. Catherine Burble's argument has always been every child in my school must compromise based on their faith. There are mm. Christian children who don't want to do revision on the Sundays. Well, yeah. tough. Um, there were some children, I think, Sikh children who didn't want to eat eggs on a Friday. Yeah. I think it was... Uh, anyway, sorry. There'd be Jewish kids on a Saturday, Jewish Sabbath. Kids, that's right. You so, might have to do a school said, event. everyone compromises and I don't divide by faith and if I have to give a Muslim prayer room at lunchtime for 300 children it undermines the ethos of my school it will cause chaos and it would take away the need to do these lovely lunches that they do where they bring everyone together Theo Chikumba is outside the High Court now Theo what happened? Yeah, well, in the last few moments, uh, we have learned that a Muslim student has lost its challenge uh, that it brought against the school that they attended, Michaela, a community school in Brenton, North West London, after claiming uh, that the policy that they had on prayer was uniquely affecting her faith and saying that with prayer as one of its five pillars. Now, just last year, there were reports of students who were, pra who were praying on the school grounds and using blazers uh, on the floor during school time. Now, there was a two-day hearing which took place here at the High Court, and the court heard how um, the school uh, allegedly had its stance of kind of discrimination, uh, which makes religious minorities feel alienated from society. But the school did defend its policy uh, with a lawyer for the school saying it argued uh, against it, saying it's justified and proportionate after it faced death uh, threats and bomb threats linked to religious observations uh, at, on site at that school. And also during that two day hearing, the head teacher uh, posted a lengthy explanation regarding uh, their decision, uh, saying that uh, where children of all races and religions can thrive. This is, de this is a decision um, that is uh, benefiting everybody and they don't want the school uh, to become a secular school. Now the school itself has around 700 pupils and roughly half of them are Muslim. Outside uh, the High Court with this ruling. Let us and know you, your and, thoughts this and morning. And you absolutely know that Catherine Burble Singh will be hard at work in her school doing what she does best, teaching great, teaching kids. And she talks about the stress of last year, particularly the well, end of 23. There were, with death there threats. Were, there were death threats uh, linked to her decision to refuse to give in to the demand for uh, a Muslim prayer room. Mm.
Let's speak now to Dr. Taj Hage, who is the founder of the Oxford Institute for British Islam. Um, good morning, Taj. Thank you uh, for joining us. Um, do you take this as a triumph of unity, actually, and a means of avoiding more division in schools? This is very heartwarming news. I mean, for for years, the, the Muslim fanatics and radicals had just been spouting the rhetoric of being foreign and outsiders and being aliens to this society. No. Muslims need to become integrated, inclusive, and part and parcel of this society. So the news today is really, really inspirational because it uh, puts the brakes on all types of fanaticism and extremism. And what many people don't know, yes, Muslims are required to, to pray five times a day, but did how many non-Muslims know that you could actually postpone the prayers? For example, so if you're at school during lunchtime, you can come home in the afternoon after school and you make up that prayer. Mm. This applies both to adults and to children. So this idea that it has to be done during school hours is nonsense. And when we have countries like Morocco and Saudi Arabia and various other places don't insist on children praying during the school hours, why is it necessary here? Mm. Some, some of the people backing the student have been, as you know, Taj, very vocal and very critical of the head teacher. Uh, but it's difficult, to, I think, to accuse her of discrimination when she has applied the same rule to all faiths. Absolutely. She should be congratulated for be, uh, having a, a standards that apply across the board. You know, you, we can't make exceptions, whether for Hindus, for Jews, for Christians, for Muslims, whatever. What, what's going to happen to this uh, cohesiveness? We all talk about cohesion in the society and how this is such a huge problem because it, it, it's preying at the edges. And when we have Catherine Burble Singh and others trying to uh, bring, bring about a, a united, uniform society, uh, 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 school, we should be applauding her. And so th this is fantastic news. And I hope that uh, 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 people mm. like you and others will really make this point that, yes, prayers are required. But Muslims can postpone these prayers to later in the yes. day when they're available. For example, I'm a heart surgeon, which I'm not. But I'm a heart surgeon and I have to deal with someone who's really having a, 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 a big issue. And during, this is during prayer time. So what do I do? Do I pray or do I treat my patients? No. I, I, I treat my patient. And so it's, Islam is a flexible thing. It's just these uh, uh, Wahhabi fanatics and other Saudi uh, extremists that are insisting that we should be following to the, to the letter when it's, Islam is actually much more uh, accommodating mm. than this. Taj, schools, I always think, are a bit of a microcosm of our wider country and society, actually. And Catherine Burble Singh talks very eloquently about having to proactively bring people together in the school from different faiths and different religions. Otherwise, she says her playground would be little tribes of children who don't play with each other. What do we learn from her about how we do that with our wider community in terms of inter encouraging integration? I mean, she's uh, knocking heads together with sort of uh, velvet gloves. You know, I mean, we're bringing, dragging and kicking and screaming. But some people, because especially Muslim parents, they teach their children, they say them and us, that, you know, the, the them are all going to hell and the us, we are going to heaven. And so th this type of indoctrination and conditioning and brainwashing is very, very dangerous for our society. And so when Catherine Burbel Singh comes about with these uh, a, a, a lunchtime get togethers where people are, are, are sitting next to each other and, and, and uh, uh, next to other people of other faiths, this is a wonderful thing. And we should be applauding this and, and we should be giving her a medal. In fact, I don't know why she had been made a dame yet. Yeah. Well, do you <laughs> what, on, on a broader point, Taj, if she'd lost, um, and, and, and that, that had been enforced, it could be that that rule could then be applied to every school in the country. Well, I mean, I think your presenter here, yeah, I can't remember her name, you actually said uh, 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 she had lost at the beginning of the... Yes. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry, the breaking news came out and we both <laughs> yeah. missed Got it the wrong way around. Anyway, yeah. uh, when you said that, I had an, uh, my heart actually sank at that precise moment. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my Lord. And, uh, oh, uh, my uh, Lord. You know, so... so uh, so I think this is a great moment for Britain and, and, and for Muslims because Muslims need to be told in no uncertain terms that if you want to live here, you need to do the three I's. And what, what are the three I's? You've got to become inclusive. Yes. You've got to become integrated. And lastly, and in, with the inverted commas, you've got to become indigenous, meaning you can be part and parcel of this society. So we are promoting the three I's of Islam, inclusivity, integration, and indigeneity. And I think and this we... is important. 
And we know, Taj, that some schools, it, this has been a problem with some people who set themselves up as Muslim community leaders. We know there's a school in the Midlands where a teacher is still in hiding because he had the temerity yeah. to use a cartoon of the Prophet Muhammad in a lesson, a lesson which he taught in that school many times before. Yeah, I mean, look at this idea that you can't show a picture, cartoon, a photo of Muhammad is nowhere to be found in the Quran. In fact, all of these things, they are non-Quranic, un-Quranic. I mean, this idea of a woman covering her hair, the hijab, it's nothing required in the Quran. This thing about women covering their faces, not required in the Quran. Men having uh, big, wild, bushy beards. Not in the Quran. So, in fact, when you look at anything that Muslims say that is part of their faith, non-Muslims, people like you in the media, need to examine and find out, well, is this actually part of Islam or is this part of culture masquerading as faith? I was just going to say, so when we do see people in f full face burqas and, and the beards and stuff, that is importing a culture from certain yes. countries as opposed to what is in their religion. And you would say, well, that is not the culture that we have here. How do we push back against it, though, Taj? Well, I think we, then we need to really make the differentiation and teach Muslims to make a differentiation between culture and creed. The two are not the same. Customs and religion are not the same. And they need to understand that their customs from Bangladesh or Pakistan or Saudi Arabia or whether they are, come from, that is not Islam. That is purely cultural and traditional and has got no basis as far as scriptural foundation is concerned. Mm. So, um, if you had a message to the family, the, fa the family supporting this student, uh, Taj, what would it be? Well, I'll, 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 I'll tell them very respectfully. Yes, m children, adults should pray. This is part of our faith. But do we have to do it at lunchtime? Because it's, it's only one prayer at school. Okay, this is the lunchtime prayer. Uh, the, the early morning one, late afternoon, evening, night prayer doesn't fall under school hours. So I'll ask them very respectfully, why can't this young lady or young man pray when she comes home? Because this is allowed in the faith. There's no, nothing in the faith that says you must actually do it under, at the stipulated time. The only proviso I would add, though, and I, we should be honest, is that the Friday prayers, Okay, it's like the uh, 11 o'clock C of E service on a Sunday. The mm. Friday prayer is a one o'clock prayer uh, uh, throughout the Muslim world. I mean, the midday prayer. Now, uh, those children, uh, I don't know what the solution should be, but uh, um, and that's a, a mandatory prayer. The others, are, by, by the way, are flexible and individual and can do it whenever it suits you in terms of your personal uh, schedule. But the Friday prayer, we need to uh, ask. Uh, uh, one way of doing dealing with this is that you, you lengthen the school day during Monday to Thursday. And then you, you shorten the day on Friday uh, to about 12.30, and then the Muslims can go have their prayers, and the rest can go home. Taj, we're short on time, but I'm interested in your own, just briefly, how unpopular are you among some elements of the Muslim community? Ex exceedingly. I'm labelled as a heretic and as a non-Muslim and so forth, but this is, <laughs> this is par for the course when they don't have answers. You see, I argue my perspective based on the Quran. I can give chapter and verse. They cannot. So when they cannot do that, their only recourse is to call me a non-believer. And so I don't really take that seriously because it's my duty as both as a Muslim and as a Brit to say, listen, this is not what is required from my religion. OK, well, listen, we thank you, Dr. Taj Hage, from the, uh, he's the founder of the Oxford Institute for British Islam. And do you know what I want to thank him for particularly? For the reason. Bring people together. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Bring people together. We need more reasons to get on with people, not and, fight with them. And how fascinating that it is not set in tablets of stone, that they have to have that yeah. prayer, meet pre-prayer, to pray at lunchtime. They can do it, she can do it when she gets home. That distinction. And I wonder if she does. And that distinction between culture and, and religion. religious yeah, faith big. is absolutely critical. We're going to have more reactions to this huge, big court verdict. So if you're just tuning in or listening on the radio, uh, Catherine Burble singh who's the head teacher of the Michaela, Michaela School in North London, has won uh, 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 and defeated a move by a student to insist that there has to be a prayer room for Muslim prayer at mm -hmm. lunchtime in the school syllabus. And the court has backed the head teacher 100%. Wonderful. It's an important victory. This Your is Britain's Newsroom. GB News.